Hello everyone, my name is JCRP and you are watching Kalakar Makerspace videos. In this video, we are going to see about the much awaited mission that we use on a daily to day basis and this is our CNC mission. This was asked by many viewers like here and we thought we, why not make a video about it. Make sure to watch till the end of this video because today we will be seeing the specs of this mission, what you should be looking for when you actually buy a mission or if you are building one, what goes into making such a huge mission and what are the features that are available in the industry. So stick around and watch till the end. When I wanted to buy a new machine, I wanted to go for a professional model because there are a few points that I wanted to be ticked. For example, the first one is it should have resume functionality after a power loss. It should be able to cut full length of sheet that is 4 by 8 sheet. It should be also be able to cut it faster because there is no point having an underpowered spindle and taking a lot of time to cut. It should be able to cut different materials like MDF, acrylic, aluminium and some non-ferrous other materials like brass also. And of course, it should be a power horse so that it can run long hours so the mission that i finally settled with was from suresh indu lasers or sil in short form and they gave this mission the 4x8 cnc mission let me tell you why i really like this mission because of its built condition when i saw the mission it was really really robust and i loved how it was being made i went to the factory i saw each the gantry the platform and everything and the thickness of the steel that they were using and i was really impressed with the build condition frankly speaking a cnc mission is just three or four stepper motors running on a rack and pinion and that's all to it but that's where people may compromise with the quality and this mission is not at all a compromise here are the specifications of the mission the spindle is 5.5 kilowatt water cooled spindle the entire electronics of the mission runs with 24 dc but the spindle alone requires a three phase connection that's because of the power that it requires it's a 5.5 kilowatt spindle and a three phase is a must well there are other spindles also available which are air cooled and can run on single phase also so what is the big difference with a 5.5 kilowatt spindle and the other spindles the 5.5 kilowatt spindle can go directly into a 12 mm or an 18 mm MDF and cut it directly in one single pass. It also comes with a cooling tower because the spindle needs cooling and a control box where all the electronics are kept separate. There are AC servo motors on the Y axis and the X axis along with the Z axis. The mission also has a waterbed table so we can cut glass, marble and other materials which require water cooling. The mission is provided with a one year warranty and SIL was good enough to take care of the mission during that one year. Let's talk about this mission in detail. The bed that I'm sitting down right now is actually made of steel beams on top of which there is a stainless steel border kind of a thing which can hold water and of course at the back there is a drain sink through which the water actually goes back inside the tank. The tank is connected to a motor from which the water is again pumped through these pipes and it comes out through this pipe and finally it will be able to cool the bit. So above the stainless steel border we have these aluminium rails which have guides in them and these guides can actually hold bolts which acts as clamp to hold the piece. Above the aluminium rails we have this PVC sheet which acts like waste board so that when you have some mishaps in cutting then it's not the aluminium that gets wasted or damaged but the PVC sheet. Let's talk about the linear bearings in this machine. All the bearings are actually made with high wind and they actually have a oil pocket where you have to regularly fill with oil so that it's always self lubricating. The X axis and Y axis move on rack and pinion and the rack and pinion is made of hardened steel and it has gone really well for these many days. The Z axis moves up and down using ball screw and it requires regular lubrication. If you have not seen my other video on how I made my own CNC machine then please click on the top right corner. The electronics that goes inside making a CNC machine is similar. First we have here some MCBs. These are just for safety measures which will switch off if there is a short circuit. Then we have a starter which actually starts up the entire machine and this starter is required because there is a lot of voltage going in. So this starter actually starts up the transformer and then it goes and starts the other controls. Next we have one, two, three, four. There are four stepper motor controls. Why four stepper motor controls when we have only three axes? That's because there is one motor on each side of the Y axis because the Y axis is actually heavy which holds the entire gantry and that's why they have two 
stepper motors on either side so there's x 2y and there is one z followed by that there is a transformer below this transformer is actually generating the power required for the stepper motors to move front and back in fact if you take the entire weight of the controller this transformer is what is the heaviest so the stepper motor drivers run of 24 volts but the power that is required to run the stepper motors are given by the transformer Let's go ahead and take a look at the other side where we have the VFD and other items. So we are on the other side of the controller and here we have the brains which is Wayne Hong NK105 controller. This is the controller which gets the information from the USB port and it gets the control outside to the stepper motor driver. So this we can say is the brain. The Wayne Hong controller actually has two wires which is coming out which is one uh, USB wire which comes out and gives a USB female port over here from where I have connected another wire, an extension wire which goes to the computer where after I make the G code using ArtCam we will put that inside and that will be able to read the code and here is another uh, data cable which comes out which comes to the uh, handheld controller through which we will be able to control the X, Y and Z axis and everything. Here we have a 24 volt power supply which actually powers up all the fans. It gives out around 5 amperes. Below here we have the VFD or variable frequency drive. This is what actually controls the speed of the spindle. So when I am actually raising or lowering the speed in the controller, this is where the instruction goes and this is what powers it up. Again this requires a 3 phase connection because the spindle also requires a three phase connection. So as you see, the box is actually huge, but the controls are very, very simple. So if you know what you're doing, then servicing a machine will be really, really easy. In fact, there are a lot of times that the rats have come inside and chewed up on the wires. And if I brought in a service specialist, they would have charged me more than 10,000 rupees per, per visit to fix. But because I was able to make my own CNC machine, the knowledge I gained from that helped me to actually fix the machine so I was able to fix all the sensors and everything by just taking a look at the wiring diagram. Next let's take a look at the water cooling station and the stabilizer. Let's talk about the chiller and the stabilizer. The chiller and stabilizer both are required for the spindle only. In the chiller we have to use filtered water so we generally buy water from uh, bislery or something and then we pour it in and here in the front we have a fan which pulls in cool air and it goes through a series of pipes and heat sink which further cools it down and then there is a very small motor which pumps the water through the 6mm pipe to the spindle. That's all it does. There is no compressor or anything inside that. So if anybody tries to oversell you, <laughs> do not believe that. The second is this stabilizer. Because we are working with three phase and the spindle has to continuously revolve around uh, steady RPM, a stabilizer is required. This is a variable stabilizer, which means there are movable parts inside which twist and turn based on the power consumption of the spindle and the power that is given to us by the MSCB. After working with the machine for two years, I can confidently say that this is not required. We can go with an air powered one and that will solve a lot of problems. Let me tell you what is the problem with this system. Because we are cutting MDF and it creates a lot of dust that gets sucked into the spindle no matter how airtight they are. and that gets into the tubes and clogs the tubes. So in this past two years, I have flushed the tube with high powered air many times and that is again something that stops your workflow. Secondly, there is no fancy electronics or a compressor which actually cools the water. So if you're working in a hot environment and the spindle is working for a longer period of time, so the spindle is pushing in hot air and the atmosphere is also hot, so there is no chance that it will get cooled. I literally had to put ice cubes inside the container so that the water gets cooled during the summer season. If the system had a compressor inside which had coolant and the coolant was actually cooling the water just like how it happens inside a fridge then it is a definitely good option for our mission but if you do not get that with your mission then don't go for a water cooled mission after talking about the mission that i have in detail let's talk about a few points that you should see when you buy your next mission first is the horsepower do you really need a 5.5 kilowatt spindle i am using it on a commercial purpose and the mission is running almost every day and that is why i need it but if you're doing it for a doi purpose then a 1 kilowatt or a 2 kilowatt is more than enough the second point is water cooled or air cooled as i already discussed 
water cooled has its cons, but it also has its advantages. One, the machine can run 24 7 because of the water cooling. Next is if you want to buy a multipurpose machine or just a machine to do your CNC work. Multipurpose in the sense, I got a machine with a water bed which I rarely use. In this two years, I would have used it just two times. It added an additional budget of 60,000 rupees, but I think it is total waste. If you are buying one machine that can do one job, that is much, much better. Do not think that you need a machine that can do all sorts of jobs which you will rarely use or which will give you a higher budget but then goes unused. Next let us talk about the freebies that come with the machine. If somebody offers you a freebie for a lesser amount of money, just do not buy it. For example, Sil gave us a dust collector which as the name is apt is collecting dust in the corner because we rarely use it. It has been 6 times that we have serviced it. We have serviced it during the warranty period, we have serviced it after the warranty period, but it just simply does not work. So if a company is really good at making a CNC machine, just get the CNC from them. If the company is really good at making a dust collector, then the get dust collector from them. Do not combine these two because they are not going to give any concentration on making that machine perfect. Another important point that I want to stress again over here is do not pay 100% money when you are buying a machine. Make sure that the machine gets delivered, installed and it is perfect and then pay them the rest of the money. Before dispatching the machine, Sil insisted on 100% payment and because I did not put them in terms, I was not able to negotiate with them and I was really struck. When they sent the machine, they did not send the dust collector for which they took an additional 40,000. I am not trying to scare you, but I am asking you to be precautious. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. You had got a lot of information about the machine, how it works and what are the parts required to make it work. If you have any questions about this machine, please put them in the comments. I will definitely answer them in the Q&A session. Also follow me on Instagram to see what I am working on right now and I keep posting about my projects over there. Hope to see you in the next video and thank you for sticking out till the end of this video. Until next time, happy learning.